Hi everyone, Sonia here, and you're watching Pouring with Sonia. Today is my use up old paints day, <laughs> but also I'm pouring backgrounds for some classic Hollywood movie monsters. I poured a background now for a Wolfman, I poured a background now for the Phantom of the Opera, and this one's going to be Dracula. So for Dracula, I want it to feel a little romantic. He's the only seductive monster I know. You know, usually you run away from monsters, but he has a way of seducing um, his victims. So I want to have some uh, pinks and reds, some interferences, some different colors. So I had mixed up some paints last night, and I also just have some old leftover paints. Some old black, some old ball gown, which is an interference gold. And I just want to show you, I just mixed up. I wanted some Grenache, some really nice deep red to go in this. Um, I want to show you how, what I do when they're too thin and when they're too thick consistency. And what I like for my blooms um, is the perfect consistency for me personally. So here I have some Quinoctridone Red Violet. And I mixed this up last night, and I just think it's perfect. It drizzles off. It leaves a nice steady stream. Um, but it's leaving a mound before it sinks down. It's not going right down into my cell activator. I want it to drip off and just disappear. I don't want it to leave a mound. I want it to just drop down right away. And that gives me really good lacing. Okay, but this is the perfect consistency for me for the colors and I want them all basically the same whether it's a tube paint like this one or a pigment so let me show you what I do to thin down and to thicken up so I also mixed up this just light magenta last night um, it's a tube paint and it's very gloppy see how it's not dripping off in a steady stream it's kind of breaking up and dropping down in clumps it's leaving a really big mound mound upon mound upon mound. it's just gloppy so I need to thin it out to be closer to the consistency of the other paints what I do to thin them out um, I can just use some straight gloss varnish Joe Sonia gloss varnish um, if it just needs the tiniest bit of thinning out this needs a lot of thinning actually so I have in one of these little um, tube bottles squirt bottles um, about this much water and about this much Joe Sonia gloss varnish. So um, it's just gloss varnish with some water. So it's thinner than just the plain gloss varnish. Just shake it up. And I'm going to squirt a little bit at a time in here. It's a pretty, it's a decent amount of paint. So I put kind of a lot in. But if you just have a really small amount, you just start with a few drops at a time. Um, stir it up. And then check. It's definitely better, but it's still too thick. It's leaving way too high of a mound um, and still a little bit gloppy, not a steady stream. So I'm gonna do about that much again. And there's no magic formula here for my water. We're on a well system and I just used my tap water right out of my well. Um, I'm sure if you wanted to use distilled water so you have the exact same water every time because there's so much chemistry in this <laughs> all of this paint mixing you'd probably get more consistent results but I just use my my water out of the faucet okay I'm really close now but still maybe a little bit thick I'm really close though I can see that it's starting to really drip off better drizzle 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 I'm going to put just a little bit more like so stir it up and I'm making sure I scrape the sides and also around the bottom. Those look kind of ridges along the bottom. And just scrape it all around. Oh, that's perfect. That is better. It's dro It's making a mound, but it's not just sitting on top for a long time before it drops down. And I've got a lot of air bubbles in this now because I've been stirring and stirring and stirring. So that's why it's kind of not dripping off as easy because I got my air bubbles in there mixed in. But that's definitely better. Okay. Conversely, so I'm done with this mixture. Now what do I do? Um, I love the Clark Kensington. I'll show you. 
This is what I use for my pouring medium. I get it at Ace Hardware. It's Clark Kensington High Gloss Premium Interior Exterior Neutral Tint Base. The code here is 102B440. I love this. Um, for my tube paints, my pigments, it doesn't dull anything. The problem is, and it's affordable. Uh, the problem is it's a little thinner than like the um, stuff you can get from Lowe's, the Sherwin-Williams Infinity. That's beautiful for mixing with the pigments. And I just mix up the pigments directly with that and I'm ready to go. This is thinner than the Sherwin-Williams. So when I, I first did a half a teaspoon of the pigment and one teaspoon of Joe Sonia Gloss Varnish. And I stirred that up really well to disperse the pigments. And then I just, I eyeball, and put in my pouring medium. And that Clark Kensington pouring medium is three parts um, Clark Kensington to one part Joe Sonia. I like the Joe Sonia as opposed to like the Minwax polyurethane. The Minwax polyurethane is thinner to an already thinner um, pouring medium paint base. So I like the Joe Sonia. It's a little thicker. But still, when I do that, it's just too thin. It's not leaving a mound at all. It's That's kind of more how I want my cell activator to be. So I need to thicken it up. What to do? I just get... This I get from Blix. Dick Blix. It's an art, artist acrylic medium, gloss medium. But also, I have some Liquitex gloss medium. I haven't used it yet. Um... This is the Gloss Heavy Gel. So I'll be trying that when I use this up. But anything that is a gloss, that is, and I'm gonna show you, this is like glump. <laughs> this is what I'm gonna use to thicken it up. It's not gonna change the color and it's um, gonna dry clear. So it's not gonna alter, but I need kind of a lot. This is kind of a lot of stuff. I'm gonna just put a big old glunk right in there. And then I'm going to stir it in and see what I get. Get it all stirred in. Again, I'm going to, especially with these pigments, you know, those micas sink to the bottom. And you want to make sure you're getting them all incorporated in here. So I added, you saw, I added a ton of that <laughs> gloss gel, but it did not alter the richness or the color at all. So now let's test. I'm... A little bit thicker but I'm gonna even need a little bit more for me because well let's see let's do this I always just eyeball it that's definitely thicker I'm gonna put one more big glop in so another big glop of this put it right in there it's a lot easier to thin stuff out than it is to thicken it up um, so for the reason of ease, less products for your pigments, that Sherwin-Williams Infinity is beautiful. I actually find that this Clark Kensington, though, I think creates a clearer pigment. Not, I even think the Sherwin-Williams has the tiniest hint of a cloud. Not much, but I don't get any cloud with this. It's just beautiful. And I added all of that gloss gel. It's just about perfect now. It's leaving a mound before it drops down, but it's drizzling off. It's not too thin. You saw how much I added to thicken it up a lot. Um, the color's just as rich as ever. So there, I hope that helps you a little bit with how to thicken and how to thin out your paints and pigments. Now, let's do a painting. I think I'm gonna use just a plain white background. I don't even know if I have enough of this. Hold on. Pause, please. Okay, I'm back. I don't have quite enough of my white paint, pillow paint, the Sherwin-Williams color to go. Just the plain white. I mix it with GAC 800. Today I'm using up all my, like, almost empty paints and stuff, so I used that one up. I don't want to open up a whole new one just for this outside. And I have some muslin. This was a mist tint. Um that I got from Sherwin-Williams. I'm just gonna put it along the outside to get something to float over. 
and I really don't care that it's not the same color. It's all going to spin off anyways. And um, if some of the stuff goes over this, I think it'll look kind of cool. No problem. So basically, um, I mix all of my pillow paints with GAC 800, especially here in the winter when there's less humidity. Um, we've got our forced air heat on and there's colder temperatures. It's a recipe for crazy. So um, I add the GAC 800 to help reduce the possibility of it crazing. I want to pour it to within about an inch of the edges that got a little carried away here. But, all right, so now to think about my colors. I've got pinks, blacks, and kind of this mica gray color. I think I'll put that down first. Sparkly, shimmery, this is a golden micaceous oxide maybe. I'm gonna put it in kind of a oval. Okay. Two pink. Now, I have some rose quartz, which is like an interference red that I'm going to put on top of that. I have, let me think about this, this really nice bright pink I'm going to put on top of that. Um, now I'm going to put some black in there, just a tube paint black to break up some of these. I don't want to, I'm going to be probably painting black on top, so I don't want to have too much. Now I have ball gown, which is, ugh, it's one of my favorites. This little piggies, it's the most beautiful interference gold you will ever find, ever. Full stop. So I got that. Now I'm going to do some, I think now, what have I done? Let's see. Okay. Now I have my Grenache, which is that beautiful, luscious red. Now I'm going to put some ballet slipper, which is kind of this, it's a delicate, soft pink with a lot of shimmer and maybe a hint of gold. Maybe, maybe it's just a hint of interference. I'm not sure, but it's a pretty cool, delicate, soft color. And now I'm going to put my Quadratridone Red Violet. This is what I'm going to put my white cell activator on top of. So I'm going to put it in just a puddle, like so. Now I'm going to put my white cell activator on top of that, and then we shall blow. I don't know, guys. What's going to happen? It's feathering a little bit. Perfect. I'm going to get my little Revlon hot air tool and start blowing. I like that I've got my little bit of black in there to break it up, but it didn't overpower it um, because I envisioned myself painting black on top of this. That's why I did a white cell activator instead of black because um, I want it to pop. I can see my interference red and gold. Um, cells galore or lacing galore, I should say. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that as far as trying to create a romantic kind of a background. And we'll see what happens when I spin it out. I can see a little bit of that micaceous oxide or whatever it's called from Golden. Let me get that. Okay, it is micaceous iron oxide. That is the golden kind of dark silver that I put down. First, it's not a pigment, it's paint. So here we go. 
I look down and make sure that there's no divots or indenting. There's not, so I'm ready to spin it out. It should spin pretty evenly then. Grab my kind of a medium strength <laughs> spin, I would say. I'm going to spin it again. I want to kind of get all the edges off. I like using my handles to start the spin, but I kind of like to slow it down with my hand along the bottom. Maybe one more little spin, and this one I'm going to spin a lot slower. I'm close to having everything off that I want. I just, I really kind of want that off a little bit. I guess I could try and tilt it a little. Like that's all I'm trying to get off. Got my tape down there. Let's see if it'll tilt off. Nope. I can tell the weight of the paint. The weight of the paint is all right here. Which I should not have used my hand to go over that because I could have dripped. So I thought, I'm going to look and see if I can tilt it without distorting the others. If the weight of the paint was in the center over this area, I could have tilted it off. It's over here, so it's going to mess all that up in order for me to get that. So I'm going to just try one more slowish spin. Let's see if I can't just get that. It's not the end of the world. I'm pretty happy with this overall. I think it feels very romantic. I got a little bit of the black showing through, which I think is beautiful. And on top of that black, I put that interference gold, and then I put that Grenache. So it's like stunning, the shimmer. I'm just going to leave it. I mean, seriously, guys, if you are about, if you're like 80% happy with your pour, leave it. Don't try and fix the 20% because you know what will happen. You'll fix that 20%, but you'll ruin like 45% of the rest of the painting that you liked. So, <laughs> been there, done that, learned from it. I'm going to leave that little bit. It doesn't really bother me. All right. I'm going to bring you down. I'm just wiping off my hands. I'm sorry for that. Um... And now let's come take a close look. So my goal here was to create a background for a classic Hollywood monster Dracula. Um, and I wanted it to feel a little romantic because he is a seductive monster. Let me move this out of the way. You can see it a little better. So sorry about my lighting. Um, plenty of good lacing in here. More lacing than cells, for sure. I mean, I wouldn't say there's any cells in this at all. I'm okay with that. It's all lacing. That's the beauty of this technique anyways, usually, as you're trying to get lacing. Now, this big amount here in the middle is probably going to be mostly painted over. I'm thinking with black. Um, but look, there's some really great um, colors that are kind of blending together over one another which I think I love that effect it almost looks romantic with none of the lacing um, I've got some little bright pops some little delicate pink some bright pink and this area here where this black is it's so I mean you can't see it it's so hard to get interference especially right here where it looks a little white um, it's not going to dry like that. It's going to dry darker. Oh, your paintings are always going to dry darker, by the way. Um, and that's just gold showing over that, which I think is going to look great. So that's my background for Dracula. Yeah, pretty happy. I don't know if I'll put him with, you know, his head up here and body here. Or if I'll do head up here and body here. The bottom part will be more painted over. So the area that I like best... I will probably leave, it'll be uncovered. Um, and so I'm gonna look at all of this area up here and think, do I like that whole area better as a show off for the background? Or do I like that whole area better as a show off for the background? And that's how I'll decide what orientation. I definitely know I'm gonna do it. Portrait, 
I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to show you real quick. It's not good lighting. I'm super sorry, but I just don't have good lighting in here. And it's still super dark out um, in the morning. But I did this one for a wolf man. He's going to be probably in a copper will be his outline. But I wanted kind of a night sky. So, oh, see? Sorry about that. And then I did this one. I was thinking very elegant, um, grand. That's for Phantom of the Opera. Because when you go to the opera, you get all dressed up and decked out. And then that's going to contrast the monster. Um, and that's just going to look cool in copper. Yeah. And then here is probably just in black, the uh, Bella Lugosi vampire. Kind of going for romantic, but also a little bit sinister with the red in there. And the block. <laughs> so I hope you've had fun watching these. I hope that watch showing you how I thin out and thicken up my paints and pigments. I hope that that was helpful to you. If so, please give this a thumbs up and um, like and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be uh, try to be a little bit better about posting videos. And until we meet again, have fun painting everyone. Bye.